Hello, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Crackin' It's Steve, about to react to this vid by Moon. It's titled, California is Everything Wrong with Society. So a few people have sent me this video. They want to hear what I think, of course, <laughs> because I'm always, you know, pro-California, pro-Los Angeles. Um, so, yeah, we're going to, you know, hear this video out and hear what they have to say. Listen, I understand that people, you know, with different socioeconomic statuses uh, have different experiences in, in California and in L.A. Um, so I, I don't ever want to invalidate anybody else's experience. But I love California. I love L.A., all right? <laughs> I've had an amazing time here. I will never leave this city, okay? I have lived other places, but this has been my favorite place to live. But, you know, I... I Actually, no. Even when I was broke, I had a great time living here. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. But, you know, everybody different. Everybody have different experiences. And I'm sure there are, you know, things that people dislike and they, they tend to focus on those things. I mean, it is overcrowded. You know, we have a homeless problem. You know, there's violence, as with any big city, though. You know, that's that's the case in America with any big city. It comes with crowds and violence. <laughs> so, th there's that. But, yeah, let, let's hear what they have to say. Let's watch. California's sunbaked beaches and Mediterranean climate have made it seem like a dream come true to anyone who saw it. For centuries, people traveled from across the entire world to the state, hoping to build a new life. With Hollywood pictures romanticizing life in California. And that's the problem. You wonder why we, we struggle. Because y'all all come here, flock here, and y'all fuck shit up. Go home. Go home. When I was younger, I don't remember all these problems. <laughs> you know, it wasn't nearly as bad. All right, niggas have come and they've made it worse. Okay, y'all have come and fucked up our land. All right, go, go back to where you come from. <laughs> it's beautiful nature. And all the money circulating there makes it seem like a paradise on earth. But today, everything seems to be changing in California. California is paradise. You have to work really, really hard to ruin paradise. But we did it once, and <laughs> it again in California. They did it in the Garden of Eden, and now they're doing it in California. And unfortunately, what used to be paradise on Earth has now become a living nightmare for most who live there. California's no. cities have been That's decimated by economic chaos, an explosion in crime, and a rapidly growing homeless population. So if you want to pay $2,500 to $3,000 a month in rent for a tiny one bed, all while surrounded by crime and poverty, then Los Angeles or San Francisco could be the right I don't think that's fair to say surrounded by crime and poverty. That, that is also a reach. We have our areas that have a lot of homeless people, and we have our areas that you know are, have more crime than others. But, you know, you, you can't put that on the whole place, you know? I just feel like that's an unfair thing to say. I experienced so many amazing places in LA, okay? You're not always surrounded by <laughs> poverty and homelessness. Like, come on, bro. It's for you. It's a tragedy how far California has fallen. And my biggest <laughs> My biggest issue is that the people who have the most shit to say and talk the most shit don't even live here. You don't even live here. You're going based on these fucking clips. I can find other clips from different states and different cities where they're doing the same shit. Like, come on. Y'all just, you know, selectively pick out the worst of the worst and then be like, look, this, this here. This is what California is. This is what LA is. And it's like, it's it's not even a proper assessment. It's, it's stupid. It's goofy. And y'all just want to hate California. Y'all want to hate LA. That's the weird thing. Thing. That's the weird shit about it. <laughs> Why y'all so obsessed with what the fuck we got going on? It's like, bro, we're about your own born ass town, bro. Tired of these niggas. <laughs> it's city's more than this rough around the edges. Any lost shit in the US is. But ten this is why ago, people want me to react to this. Because they want me to rant. Like you you already know what I'ma say. You you know what I'ma say. People who request this based on the other the, the other statements that they left when they requested this video, I know, I know y'all trolling me. Y'all just want me to talk shit. But right. controversial change to state laws pushed California off the edge, and that was called Proposition 47, and it came into effect in late 2014, and since then, the entire state seems to have been plunged down into this dystopian vision. Craig. Now, the changes it made were relatively <laughs> simple. Lots of crimes that used to be felonies were recategorized into misdemeanors. In the US, a felony is a charge for a serious crime which often leads to jail time, while the misdemeanor is less serious, more like a parking ticket. 
crimes. The most important crimes that got downgraded were theft, shoplifting, and fraud. If the value of whatever was stolen or defrauded was under $950, then the most you could expect to see was a fine. It also decriminalized the use and possession of hard drugs. If you got caught with any amount worth under the $950 cutoff, then it was barely worth it for the police to even take notice. It might seem obvious now how bad of an idea this was, but there was a vision behind it. The lawmakers who pushed it through said it was designed to- And a lot of this looting and shit they're showing, I'm pretty sure that was like around the time of the riots and stuff. They're not just doing that on a regular basis, bro. Is the pressure yeah, be of honest with by the changing the focus of government away from punishment and towards rehabilitation and education, they thought they could tackle the root causes of the state's problems, which sounds great on paper. With fewer people to arrest and imprison, money could then be diverted away from the police and towards better things like schools or care for the homeless. Of course, when the law actually came into effect, this wasn't even close to what ended up happening. One of the most obvious and destructive effects has been the rise of serial shoplifting in California. It didn't take long for criminals to realize they could pretty much take what they wanted from shops. As long as each hit didn't add up to the $950 felony amount, they could get off scot-free, and there was nothing yeah. anyone could do about it. Now, these were still technically crimes, but they just weren't really punished anymore. The police had been made powerless to intervene through underfunding and more hoops to jump through before a conviction. It meant that shoplifters could only get in trouble if a security guard caught and detained them, often waiting hours for the police to show up. When they did, the guard would then have to go to court on his own time and provide evidence that proved the crime. Then, and only then, would the shoplifter get punished. But because it was now a misdemeanor, it usually just resulted in a fine of around $1,000. It's hard to say how many of these fines themselves were even enforced. The homeless people who committed the offenses are hard to track down, and then you'd have to somehow get the money from them, which is pretty hard considering they'd almost suddenly spent it already. This is what caused those infamous videos of people shamelessly looting stores in broad daylight, like while powerless customers and shopkeepers watched helplessly. And it's made it so that California is now the top state in the country for retail theft, even despite the fact that most shoplifting goes unreported. It's mainly because there really isn't any point in even making the phone call anymore. Small businesses have been hit the hardest by this. They've tried to come up with ways to stop it, of course. Most shops in places like San Francisco or San Diego now keep most they, of their products- They do be like shit. <laughs> Some places do. When, uh, the stores I go to don't do not do all this stuff. So I feel like, the yeah, the stores I visit are not in, like, heavy crime. No, that's not true. Because I do go to some stores down here in downtown. Um... But yeah, they do lock up a lot of shit sometimes. sometimes. But even treating all customers like criminals hasn't really worked. 75% of small businesses lose between $500 to $2,500 in products every single month because of this epidemic of theft. There have been casualties across the state, but one example comes from Clement Street, a road in San Francisco that used to support tons of shops and small businesses. Unfortunately, they've been dealing with multiple break-ins and thefts as well as shoplifting which are pushing them further towards bankruptcy. In an interview with local TV news, one of the business owners told reporters that, quote, we just want to do our business peacefully and we want to feel safe when we're doing it because running the business is already hard and we don't need something like this to add on top of it. But before we continue, I want to tell you about a video. Y'all go for it. A few, uh, a few, well, you can use, doing it. Mouthpiece. Damn, as long as I have. Shit, okay. Green to get your free fume topper when you order your journey pack today. It brings us to another issue that comes from Proposition 47, a steep rise in more organized smash and grab heists. Gangs of criminals will often target entire high streets in one night, breaking into the shops one by right. one and Never taking mind. whatever valuables- A couple of those clips though were though. I recognized a couple and they were old, old clips, but these, no, are, are recent from last year they can find. It can only add to the massive pressure being felt by small businesses across California. Lots of them have been pushed to their breaking points or forced to close down. Cafe International, which has survived for 35 years in San Francisco, was forced to temporarily close in 2021 to deal with the damages. In a social media post, the owner blamed it on the massive rise in shoplifting and petty crime, as well as multiple break-ins. And thankfully, it did manage to survive despite the continued assaults, but other businesses haven't been so lucky. Large retail chains like Target or Nordstrom have had to close a bunch of their stores in LA and San Francisco because of this. It's this atmosphere of fear and apathy from the government that led California down the sorry road. The majority of the crimes have come from a small group of repeat offenders, but police have been prevented from actually cracking down on them. The proposition is now widely condemned by California's people, 
the majority supporting harsher punishments because of the spree of crime. The question still remains, where did all of the money go? If Proposition 47 was meant to free up resources to solve these problems, what did that end up looking like? Part of the plan was to put more money into California's homeless problem, which was only getting worse in 2014 when it passed. Looking at the state of things now though, it clearly hasn't worked. Over a quarter of the homeless population in the entire US live in California. There's around 180,000 of them, and that's only counting the people we know about. Between 2007 and 2022, the number of homeless went up by over 30%. It just- I already told y'all why this is though, and it's so annoying because people move to California, you know, from other states, they move here because they're trying to escape their boring hometown or because they want to be a star and want to make it or whatever the fuck they're trying to do, but they don't survive. They don't make it, all right? <laughs> they don't survive financially, so then they end up homeless. A lot of homeless people are from different states. If you talk to them, you see fucking records of them and shit, even online, you'll hear some, oh, I'm from, I'm from Ohio. I'm from the, it's like, bro, go home, bro, but then they can't. They stuck. They ain't got no money and then they family, some of their family don't fuck with them or whatever. So that's really annoying. That's why we have so many homeless people. And it's like you can't really keep up with it because more and more people are always moving here. So many transplants who come here and only a small percentage of them make it. So a lot of them end up homeless and then they on the street. It's like, how do you combat this? The year after that, it went up by another 5.7%. But why is it getting so much worse in California I just told compared you. to other states? I just told Homelessness you. and substance abuse go hand in hand. You can't understand one without factoring in the other. On the one hand, using hard drugs like amphetamines or opiates often can very easily lead people towards homelessness. I mean, it's it. the final stop in a tragic journey, the very bottom of the pit. A lot of the time though, it works the other way. People become homeless because of other reasons. Then they start using as that a coping too. mechanism. It doesn't matter how it starts though, frequent use and addiction keeps people on the streets. It traps them in a cycle of using up everything they have to make sure they can get the next dose. By pretty much decriminalizing both drug possession and theft, while drug legalization is a good thing towards liberty, and it generally makes a lot of sense, Proposition 47 almost makes it so that open drug use on the streets is now normalized, and it makes it that much easier for people to get trapped in the spiral. First, there's shoplifting and petty theft, which we've already talked about. I didn't see somebody do crack on the really elevator. Punished, addicts always have a way to make enough This was money. years ago. I ain't never seen no shit like that in my life. I was like, what the fuck? Are you doing crack on the elevator? Shit is crazy. I just get out of here. This was in Hollywood specifically. Again, the ghetto. Downtown LA, the ghetto. Hollywood, the ghetto. So those are the two main places you want to stay away from if you come visit. All right? Pop in, pop out. <laughs> don't, don't try to get no hotel there, okay? I don't recommend. Zero out of ten. All right? I mean, I live here because I know how to navigate it, but yeah, don't, re don't recommend to get that next hit. With drug possession effectively decriminalized as well, there really isn't the any need to hide it anymore. That. The cops don't have the time, the resources, Before. or the permission to deal with it. So people buy, sell, and use drugs in public. Far from trying to stop this, Proposition 47 has actively encouraged it. A large part of the money that is freed up went towards harm reduction for addicts. And they're generally well-intentioned programs. Giving addicts access to free healthcare can only be a benefit. But they also offer other services, like giving people access to clean needles, and even in San Francisco, apparently out Alcohol? Now, if they're using clean and sterile equipment, then addicts are less likely to get bloodborne diseases, which is a good thing, and it might have helped if that were the only dangers of drug use. But the kinds of opiates that we see today on the streets are so potent and harmful, it doesn't really matter. They'll often just kill people far quicker than the disease ever could. But it's also meant that any addict has everything they need to keep using, all completely for free. They have everything they need, and the police aren't putting them into mandatory rehab programs either like they used to. And the results have been tragic to say the least. In the years after Proposition 40, was introduced, overdose deaths exploded in San Francisco, rising from around 100 a year to over 500. There are other factors at play here, like the increased potency of the drugs themselves, but it's undeniable that Proposition 47 hasn't played a major role. In New York, for example, overdose deaths have increased, but only by around half the rate. We just haven't seen the same spike in other cities across the country. The last nail in the coffin is the ratio of homeless people that aren't living in some kind of shelter. Around 70% of California's homeless population live outside of shelters, far more than any other parts of the country. First, there's the problem of who they let in. Lots of the money that went towards shelters really aren't suitable for most homeless people. They often have strict rules banning drug use and pets, which already blocks a massive part of the homeless population from using them. California's near perfect climate actually well, makes ready, this worse in this case as well. Drugs. In New York, around only 5% of the homeless population actually sleeps on the streets. For a large part of the year, it's just too cold to survive outside with that just part a sleeping too. bag. I was about to say, that's another, another major part where some homeless people also migrate from other states to come to California because the weather is better and they're, they're more likely to survive in California versus a New York 
or you know somewhere where it's fucking snowing you gonna die you know trying to live on the street so of course they like let's go to california <laughs> where it's basically sunny year round i mean we have our gloomy days of course and rain but for the most part the weather is solid there's no reason why i love living here um so that's another reason why and that's not true of places like Los Angeles. Then there's the fact that addicts have most of their needs provided for anyway, and the police really don't interfere. So why not set up your tent on the main high street? The result of all of this has been tent cities and open air drug markets that we see on the streets of California today. And they've simply made these cities far worse places to live in. In their estimation, 85 to 90% of the police calls for service deal with the homeless in some fashion. Most of these crimes are committed by mentally ill or drugged up homeless people rather than some group of organized criminals, which is something you see a lot in LAPD jurisdiction. Even though there are plenty of facilities aimed at helping these people, the harsh reality is that most transients are either suffering from severe mental illness or drug use. They then went on to say that it's not an easy fix, and ultimately it needs to be handled on a much bigger level if we're ever going to see any progress. Take the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It used to be one of the biggest tourism landmarks in the state. Now, most people avoid it. It's known as being a dangerous area, especially according to locals who already know what's going on. I'm living somewhere where I don't feel safe taking my mom for a walk. I don't feel safe sending my nieces to the store if they came to visit me. The homeless encampments nearby make it a hostile environment. Even the smell is apparently awful. The crime though is the worst part. Assaults, stabbings, and murders are much more common now. Each bad experience that someone has chips away at California's reputation. Now people do still come to see Hollywood today, but it's hard to say how long they'll keep coming with families if it continues to stay this way. Even just recently, Graham Stephan released a video about Santa Monica, showing how many shops are closing down and how crime is through the roof there. Which means theoretically you can walk into a store, steal up to $950 of goods, and then walk out without really any fear of consequence. Especially when most employees are told not to get involved, by the time the police do show up, the suspect is long gone, and a lot of the cases honestly just aren't heavily prosecuted. This is supposed to be one of the nicest places in Los Angeles. Now local governments across California oh, have no, tried to deal with this, moving the tent cities around or trying to uproot them entirely. But many of these initiatives have failed, like in San Francisco. Now San Diego is often pointed to as a better example, but it's not really all it seems. Recently they passed laws allowing the police to actually deal with the tent cities and move homeless people off the main roads, which has gotten them away from the schools and the main streets, but it hasn't solved the problem at all. They're still there, just in different places like under bridges or next to the highways. It's definitely not a long-term solution, in fact it mirrors the early stages of what could become a much larger problem. Brazil and its largest cities are home to absolutely massive slums called favelas. They also began as the equivalent of tent cities, large amounts of people living packed together in impoverished homes. As they grew into permanent shanty towns, the crime and the poverty only got worse. The environment creates gang culture and chaos. Today, pictures of the favelas contrasted with the upper class mansions on the other side of the hill are known around the world, and favelas are seen as one of the most dangerous places in the world. This is potentially a future that's unfolding right now in California as you've got million dollar apartments completely surrounded by desperate people without a penny to their name. And the results are clear to see. Entire communities are now crumbling under the pressure. Issues like homelessness can seem so complicated that you can't get your head around them. But one pretty simple reason it's getting worse in California is how expensive the alternative has become. Each time the rent goes up, which has been happening every year since 2011, it puts more families out on the streets. LA and California's other large cities are now some of the most expensive in the world, especially when it comes to housing. If you're living in some parts of California Amazing. earning the minimum wage, you need to work the equivalent of three full-time jobs just to scrape by. It means that a lot of people working essential jobs which society couldn't function. Yeah, you gotta move though. That's the thing. I feel like in people moving, that would also like make the rent and shit go down. Because not only does inflation affect the cost of housing and shit, but also the demand. You know, there are a lot of people here. Uh, but yeah, some people move out, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. We're leaving. My sister left. She went to Vegas. She moved to Vegas. So it's like, yeah, it's no shame in that. And without, it is and now ridiculous. being forced out but of the, the system, it's completely it. unsustainable. But why has it gotten so bad? Well, a massive part of the problem is that there simply isn't enough homes being built. California is the most regulated state in the USA. Their code of regulations, the book containing all the administrative rules, is over 21 million words long. It means their regulations are around three times stricter compared to the average states. And so building anything here is way more expensive than it should be. The fees, the permits, and the fines, if you make any mistakes, can lead to building a home or a block of flats cost 18% more than it should. And then there are the delays, and it can take years of waiting and therefore years of legal fees to get through all of the red tape. 
With all of these extra costs, it makes it far riskier for construction companies to actually build anything in the States. You can easily go bankrupt waiting for your permits to come through. They can go pretty much anywhere else in the country and make more money in a much shorter time. Proposition 47 was meant to help with this in a roundabout way. The money they took from the police was meant to build more shelters and housing to go towards solving the homeless problem. And it would go some of the way towards relieving the state's massive housing shortage. But a state audit in April showed how ineffective they've really been. It was revealed that despite throwing billions of dollars at the problem, the state of California rarely kept track of where the money was actually going or if it was actually helping. It's a statewide problem. They spent $24 billion in programs to solve homelessness between 2018 and 2023. In the same period, the homeless population swelled by 30,000 more people. And it's really bad on just an individual city level as well. San Diego spent over $2 billion on homelessness programs between 2015 and 2022. It's really confusing how they could spend so much money while the problem still gets worse. But it makes a lot more sense when you look at what they've actually been buying with that taxpayer money. Recently, Santa Monica officials gave the go-ahead for building a set of basic apartments to house homeless people in. You might think that it's a step in the right direction. It's better than them living on the streets at least. But the twist is that each of these units will cost over a million dollars to make. An insane amount for basic homes, especially considering the city already owned the land itself. Contracts like these are probably the only reason any construction company stays in California anymore. It all stinks of corruption. Billions of dollars have disappeared, the state doesn't even write down where it all went, and they've been putting scams like this for years. See, it's not gonna fix it. They're bankrupt. This state is bankrupt because they're incompetent. They're not gonna become competent if you give them more money. You know, it's just, they've, they've managed the money that they got very poorly. They already have high taxes. There's a 13.5% state income tax here in California. And the, the place yeah, is still fucked up. Terrible. In 2022, the city of LA spent over 50 million All right, this on buying a 50-story luxury <laughs> apartment building to it's move homeless people into. It already seems like an awful decision to begin with, but over two years later, and they still haven't filled even a single one of those apartments. There's no way the best solution for homelessness was to buy luxury apartments at crazy prices and then not even use them. They haven't even bothered to hide how corrupt it all seems. This all amounts to millions and millions of taxpayer money that went out of the city's budget and into someone else's pockets. It should hopefully be clear now that California's idiotic laws are really the tip of the iceberg. They enable the corruption that's keeping California cities incredibly expensive, while also full of homelessness and crime. It's why the recently announced plans to scrap the Proposition 47 are a little too late. It's taken years and years for people's voices to finally get heard and now the damage has already been done. Even now, though, with so much overwhelming evidence of its failures, Gavin Newsom and other Democratic lawmakers are dead set on keeping Proposition 47 in place. But eventually people couldn't keep ignoring what's right in front of them. And now there's bipartisan support to get rid of it. There's enough support to get rid of it that reversing the law is now going to be on the ballot in the November election. At least that's if Newsom and his cronies can't put a stop to it. First, Newsom tried to get it removed completely, but he had to back down when even his fellow Democrats wouldn't let him. So he's moved on to a different option, delaying and complicating it. Despite his outward support for Proposition 47, he's now been trying to get his own watered-down version of the reform onto the ballot instead. His version wouldn't actually deal with the problems Proposition 47 has created. For example, it would only make selling other drugs laced with fentanyl a major crime, rather than actually dealing with fentanyl itself. Other than that, he's also introduced new laws to combat specific cases of serial theft. Now, it might put an end to the videos of people shoving shop merchandise into garbage bags, but it wouldn't really do much else. Suspiciously close to the upcoming general election, he's also suddenly been making public appearances clearing up homeless camps and passing laws to finally let police move them off the main streets. Mm. The common factor is that these are all moves designed to help with appearances while keeping the same moldy status quo. It isn't surprising that people have been leaving California in droves for years now. High prices, rents, crime yeah, levels, and taxes have taken their toll on the people, and a huge exodus has begun. Over 2021 and 2022, nearly 750,000 people left the state alone, and that's after you offset the people that moved in, with people instead moving to states like Texas or Florida, which offer far lower taxes and much safer cities. It hasn't just been people and families either, like but small there. businesses are getting sick <laughs> of the massive. I tried to live in Texas. I don't like it. No shade to my Texans. Right. Only as what a full resident of California, I have to question whether or not these are actually strict enough to make a difference. Because let's be real, for this to really go into effect, a shoplifter would first have to get caught, likely on camera with proof. Their items would then need to be counted, most likely across counties. And then the state would have to keep proper records of everything just to be able to prosecute. I mean, why would you pay double the rent and way more taxes just to open a shop next to a homeless encampment? The large companies they used to call California home are the same. 
Tesla and Chevron have been moving their factories to Texas. Tons of tech companies like Messer and PayPal have abandoned San Francisco. Businesses leaving California doubled from 2012 to 2019, but over 30 years, the state has experienced a net loss of 17,000 businesses. The study says it's high taxes, heavy regulation, and generally unfriendly business environments. And it's really a terrible shame that this place of amazing natural beauty, rich culture has fallen so far. But today it's clear that the only people welcome in California either have tens of millions of dollars or no money at all. And it's the regular people that are I suffering the consequences of this. Yeah, but I still love living here, even though I don't have tens of millions of dollars yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't deny these issues. There are definitely a lot of problems in California um, and a lot of businesses and people do suffer. So that is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, I mean, I always view... Life from my own viewpoint, I can't save the world, okay? And I can't worry about every single problem that is going on out there. I, I don't have the power to change things. And um, even people who vote, again, I talk about this all the time. Y'all think y'all got power? Oh, vote, and that helps. That don't help shit. These niggas are all corrupt, okay? This is all a shit show. <laughs> In California, everywhere, in all of America, like, listen, it's a shit show. So all I do is just live my life and do the best I can do personally. And I know that sounds selfish, but it is what it is. You can't, you can't help everybody. You just can't. So I just accept things for how they are. And, you know, I just live my life and uh, focus on what I got going on. So that that's just that. And yeah, my experience just doesn't reflect this. Like, I, don't, I mean, I do see homeless people when I'm out about here and there, but you know, it's not like they're everywhere. Like people would lead you to believe that they're, they're literally everywhere. A lot of them are downtown specifically, which is where I live, but I don't do a lot of stuff downtown. I leave downtown. <laughs> I just like living here because I, I'm in the center of a lot of things. I could get to different parts of LA really quickly. Um, and I like my apartment, but yeah, uh, it's not like you just go anywhere and it's home of people all on the roads. Like that's just not the case. Um, but yeah, I mean there are problems, and I hope that they fix them. But um, I I I have a good time living here. That's all I'm saying. But I understand a lot of people don't, and their experience is valid as well. But yeah, interesting video. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all the next time. Bye.